Hello, my name is Andrew Perkins and welcome to part 7 of my Laravel tutorial. In this video we're going to learn how to validate our data before it's saved into the database. In the last video we created this author's new page to display a form and create a new author. Uh, the problem is, is we don't have any validation. We could actually leave the entire form blank and just submit that and it would create an empty author in our database. So let's add some validation to our application. We'll go into our text editor and I'm going to show you how to do your validation inside of your model. You could do your validation in your controller if you wanted to, um, but I'd recommend not to as that's the whole point of having a model, is the model supposed to work with your data. So we're going to do our validation in the model here. Uh, so we'll open up our models folder and open up our author model. And the first thing we need to do is create a property to hold our validation rules. So I'm going to create a public static property called rules and it's going to be an array of validation rules and we can use key value pairs here to define our rules. So the key is going to be the field that we want to validate and the value is going to be the validation rules that we're applying to that field. So let's validate the name field and Laravel has a bunch of different built-in validation rules that we can use and one is called required and this will ensure that the name field is required it won't be allowed to be empty before you can save it into the database now you can use a pipe or a vertical bar to separate your validation rules and then you can just chain them together here so we can use another validation rule called min and then a, col a colon and then you pass in the minimum length that you want to be allowed for this field. So in this case they'll have to enter at least two characters in order to save the name into the database. Now we'll also want to validate our bio or the biography field. So we'll use the required uh, validation here and we'll also use the min again and just ensure that it's at least 10 characters in length. Now there's many other validation rules that you can use that are built into Laravel. You can also create your own custom validation rules. Um, so I encourage you to go take a look at the documentation so that you can do more extensive validation in your applications. But for this tutorial, uh, this is going to be good enough. So now that we have our rules, we just want to create a method that we can call from our controller and we'll be able to pass in the data from our form so that we can validate that data. So let's create a validate method that we can use. So we'll create a public static method here. I'm making it static just so I can uh, call the author model in our controller and easily access the method. So we'll create a public static method called validate and it should accept the data that we want to validate. In this case it's going to be the data from our form and Laravel has a validator class which we can use to validate our data with. So we're just going to return and we'll call the validator class and its make method and this is going to create a validator for us. So it takes two parameters. The first parameter is the data that you want to validate so we just pass in our data here and the second parameter are the rules that you want to validate the data with. So we'll use our static rules property from up here so we'll just say static and then the rules property. So this is going to return a validator object back to us and we'll be able to use that object in order to check whether or not our validation failed or passed. So we'll save our model and let's switch over to our controller. So we'll go to our authors controller and down here in our post create action, this is the action that handles processing our form instead of just saving the author into the database and redirecting, let's first validate the data prior to saving it. At the top of our action, I'll create a validation variable and we'll call our author model and that validate method that we created. And now we just need to pass in the data from our form so we can validate it. We can do that using the input class and we have a static all method to pass in all of the data from the form. Now that'll validate our form data and remember when we created this method it returns a validator object to us. And so since we assigned it to this validation variable we'll have access to that object and we can use it to check if our validation has failed or passed. 
So we'll use the validation object in a conditional here. I'll say if, and then we'll say the validation object, and we have a fails method. So this is going to return true if the validation fails. And then we'll just do an else here, meaning that the validation has passed. And so if the validation did pass, we just want to save the author into the database like we did in the previous video. So we just need to fill in this part if the validation fails. So if the validation does fail, what do we want to do? Well, we just want to make sure we display the form again. So that means we'll want to redirect back to our uh, new author route, and that'll display the form. And then we want to make sure to display the error messages so they know what went wrong. And then they can resubmit the form and try to save the author into the database again. So to do all of that, we can actually accomplish that all in one line of code. So we're just going to return here, and we'll use our redirect class so that we can do a redirect. We're going to redirect to a route using the toRoute method, and we just want to redirect to our new author route. That'll redisplay the form for us. And then we have a withErrors method and this is going to allow us to display our error messages. We have to make sure that we pass in our validation object here so that it has the correct uh, error messages to display. And now inside of our view, we're going to have access to an errors object that we can use to display our error messages. The next thing we need to do is just call the with input method and this is going to ensure that after the validation fails, the form remembers what was originally entered into the form. So it's going to remember the old input. So let's save this, and we'll just go over it real quickly. We're just calling our validate method, and we're passing in the form data to validate it. And we're going to use the validator object to check if the validation fails. If the validation does fail, we're just going to re-render the new author form page and make sure that we display error messages and make sure that the form remembers what the user typed into the form. If the validation is successful, we're just going to save the author into the database and redirect to the index page and give them a success message like we did in the last video. Let's switch into our new view file. So under views, authors, open up new.blade.php and we just need to make sure that we're displaying our error messages here. So right above the form open method, let's uh, use the errors object to check if we have any errors. So we can, inside of a conditional, call the errors object, and it has a has method, and that's going to return true or false if we have any errors. So if we do, we're just going to display those errors inside of an unordered list and we'll open up our blade brackets. We'll use the errors object, and we have a first method, and we just pass in the name of the field that we want to display errors for. So in this case, we'll display errors for the name field. And so should there be any errors, what this is going to do is display the first error for the name field. And now we can also format the HTML that should be wrapped around the error message by passing in a second parameter. And so we can tell the error to be wrapped inside of a list item tag. So you just put in the opening list item tag and then you use a colon and then the word message and then close the list item tag. So the error message is going to be printed where colon message is and it's going to be wrapped in these list item tags for us. So that's going to display the errors for the name field. Let's duplicate this because we're going to need to display the errors for the biography field as well. And there we go, that'll handle displaying our error messages if we have any. Now we just need to make sure that our form fields are remembering whatever the user typed into it. So after the form validation, if it comes back and it fails, it needs to repopulate the form with the old input data that they originally typed into the form so that they don't have to retype it over. So to do that, uh, in our text method calls and our text area, method calls, we can actually pass in a second parameter and we can use the input class and it has an old method to grab the old input and that'll display whatever they entered into the name field prior to submitting the form. And we can do the same thing down here for the text area. So we'll use input and call the old method and 
will display the old input for the biography field. So now when our form submitted, it's going to remember whatever they typed into the form field. So that's it for our validation. Let's go test it out. Uh, make sure all of your files are saved. And we'll go into our browser. And here's our form page to create a new author. Let's refresh this and see if we get any errors. All right, so let's test out our validation. So I'll type in just one character here. You can see some of the other names that I've typed in while messing around. So let's type in just one character here and see what kind of validation we get or what kind of errors we get. There we go. We can see it says the name must be at least two characters and the bio fields required. If we don't do anything, it's going to say the name fields required. And let's put in a full name. And then how about just part of the bio? And so we get the bio must be at least 10 characters. And we can see that the form is remembering what we entered. So let's uh, enter in some completely valid data here. We'll say um, Terry's bio goes here. And so this should pass validation, and it should save the author into the database. So let's click Add Author. And there we go. We get redirected back to the author's index page, and it says the author was created successfully. And here's Terry. So it looks like our validation is working. And I hope you found this useful for validating your data. And thanks for watching.